it's very common, you know, probably half of our clients that we see at Caring Medical are very serious athletes. Like I, we saw someone who's gonna be a professional hockey player, you know, he's drafted and all that stuff today. And so, just to give you an example, since that's a client that we just saw, came in, I diagnosed him as a labral tear. So he is in season, you know, he wants to get out there as quick as possible. So I'll just basically share what I shared with this athlete, and it's a very, very serious athlete. One is absolutely, even when you're injured, you exercise, because you're an elite athlete. You have to keep exercising. The only thing is, you obviously wouldn't do an, the exercise that caused the injury. So in other words, this athlete still should do core work, still should do aerobic work, you know, still should do leg strengthening. But what the key thing was, because they have joint instability from a labral tear, because most of the time when athletes get treated with prolotherapy, it's because they have joint instability. So they have to do their athletics or their exercising in their click-free range of motion. So it means that this athlete has a distinct clicking sound in, in his hip. So I showed him how to feel it, that he could feel this clicking sound, you know, and so, uh, so there's a certain degree of flexion and extension that the athlete can do where there's not a clicking sound. For a hip labral tear, you can't externally rotate because that puts, that, that's when you get that sensation. So you exercise within your click-free range of motion. So he can do squats, he can do other strength training in regard to his legs as long as there's not that clicking sound. The clicking sound is putting too much strain on the joint and that's going to hurt his healing from prolotherapy. So his joint needs motion but it doesn't need stress. So one thing is don't exercise within your click-free range of motion. Two is uh, ligaments and tendons like motion. So we try to get athletes to do exercises that have to do with motion. That could be exercises like swimming, like cycling, you know, and other kinds of exercises. Then three is ligaments are very sensitive to stretch. So if you have an injured ligament, like the joint's unstable, if the ligament is weakened, that ligament is going to be very sensitive to stretch. So you shouldn't have sharp pain. So in other words, don't do exercises that cause sharp pain. Typically, we like athletes right away to do strength training versus stretching. Because stretching, if you don't do, have, do the proper kind of stretching, you actually stretch the ligaments. So we don't want to, so in other words, the ligaments want some tension on them, like cycling would be a little bit of tension, but not so much stress where the thing's getting all stretched out. So say somebody had a meniscal tear. You know, so if you had a meniscal tear and the joint was unstable, what we, you would feel is a little bit of heat. Like in other words, when you touch the knee joint, you would feel a little bit of heat. So when you feel heat, it means that the joint is swollen, a little bit of swelling. That means the athlete got the knee joint in an unstable position. So if you're getting prolotherapy and you're continually getting the joint in an unstable position, that's going to limit your healing from prolotherapy. In other words, it's going to take you more visits, more expense, take you longer. And I don't know about you, but I like to spend my money on things mm -hmm. beside doctors. So I want my clients to spend their money on other things beside doctors instead of me. Like in other words, let's get you better the quickest way we can. So if you have a, like a knee joint problem, I don't want you doing exercises that cause the knee joint to get hot. So one thing an athlete can do is when they're exercising their shoulder, the temperature of the, the non-injured shoulder and the injured shoulder should be the same. So why not feel it before the exercise, do your exercises, and the, the, it should feel the same temperature. If you feel a little bit of heat, like it feels a little bit warmer in the injured knee or this with exercise, I'm telling you, that there's now fluid, there's extra fluid in that joint. So in other words, during the exercise, you got the joint in an unstable situation. That's going to limit your healing. So in other words, you're pretty much free to do all the exercises except do exercises in a click-free range of motion. Don't have extra heat. Don't do any exercise that causes sharp pain. And if you want to be safe, why not do exercises initially that are super slow? So it means that, why not since you have an injury and you want to still do strength training, why not do the exercise very slow? So whatever the exercise is, say you're doing lat pull downs, you go, you know, you go up slowly for 10 seconds and you go down slowly for 10 seconds. And you try to uh, fatigue at the seventh rep. 
Athletes often get injured or hurt their healing because they do exercises too quickly. Like, in other words, just do the exercises slowly. You know, get a burn, but don't get sharp pain. Do the exercise. Like, in other words, if the shoulder starts clicking right here, then just do the exercise in that range of motion. When you have a labral tear or shoulder instability, usually at first you just do exercises where your elbow's at your side and make sure you, know, you recover. Then after the second visit maybe, I'll say that you, know, you can do exercises where your arms are at your side. And obviously the actual exercise regime will depend upon the actual injury and the athlete, but I'm just giving some guidelines. And it's, it's a given that you're gonna eat healthy. You know, it's a given that you know, if you are seeing a therapist, you'll, you know, give the, get the recommendation from the therapist or your trainer. And also, you know, we believe in nutritional supplements, so I'd often have athletes take nutritional supplements.